keep it going. So, Ricky? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Ricky Alarcon and I'm with Loyola University in New Orleans. I'm a regional representative and I cover the whole state of Texas and I'm currently in Dallas, Texas. Awesome, and my name is Christina Dominguez. I am one of the Texas Regional Recruiters for the University of Arizona. We have quite a bit of uh, people flooding in right now. So um, a little housekeeping, if you can keep your video off, so then um, for just privacy purposes, we are recording this and we'll put this on our HARN YouTube. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. But I know Genesis and Ricky are going to take over and start this conversation. Genesis, Genesis you're, you're muted. muted. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we also put a PDF, so if you would like to visit a different break room um, after this, you kind of have a little knowledge of like what are the other break rooms and what they're talking about. So um, as we begin, we kind of want to, we are first generation students. Um, I myself am a first generation and I graduated from UHV um, in 2016. So one thing that I kind of want to talk about is like academics. So one of the things is, and one of like my viewpoints as I was going through school is kind of getting to know what like my career goal was or like what the profession that I wanted to achieve and what was going to take me there. So I think like using your resources on campus is really important. Obviously, your academic advisors is going to probably be your number one person to go to because they're going to be the ones who are going to be able to like say like, okay, well, maybe psychology can take you. Um, your bachelor's in psychology, bachelor's in this and that. So I think um, using your resources on campus, but based, more knowing what is your career path, what is, what is what you want to accomplish. Yes, definitely, you know, once you get to college, there's definitely people here to help you once you get here. Um, and so this is goes for any college, definitely. Um, and then, you know, people know what major you want to go into. That's perfect. That's great. But if you don't know what you want to go into, that's like in my school, for example, we love students that kind of undecided. So basically, like Genesis said, uh, you're definitely going to meet with your academic advisor. They're going to ask you some questions about what subjects you like. What do you like working with people? Do you like working by yourself? Are you creative, artistic? Are you more science math focused? And so based off of that, they'll kind of recommend some classes for you. And so off of that, um, basically, again, hopefully you'll try out some classes, find a major that you'll like and go with that. So again, in a lot of schools now, what they do, uh, because when I was going to school, basically you were on your own for a lot of the things, but now they have mentors, they have tutors to help you with your subjects. Um, they have like professors that really do invest in, in making sure you're very successful. So just make sure you look at all those resources. Yeah, I think what Ricky said is so important um, because when I decided to attend university, there were so many, if you actually look at the breakdown of your tuition and fees, there are fees that you will have to pay for regardless of whether or not you use them. And I think that's something I wish someone would have told me when I was going because I'm spending money on it and I wasn't using any of it. And I'm also just not talking about tutoring. I'm talking about the recreational center. Look at the breakdown of your tuition and fees when you do decide what college or university is right for you. To make sure you're getting the best um, education and also utilizing all the resources that you have. I know as a first generation student, it is so very intimidating to go because you feel like I don't have anyone to talk to. Like my family doesn't know what I'm going through. They don't understand how I can balance or I can't balance going to school and making time for them. So I think an important conversation for you to have with your loved ones, with your friends, is making sure that they understand this is a time commitment, so you do love them, but there may be things that 
you won't be able to attend because you have to finish that essay or you have to read that chapter or you have to do a study group. But I think that's just my two minute inspirational message for you. Great. So, I mean, one of the things that Ricky and I were talking and touching point is that every student is so different, regardless if you are first generation or not, your journey is going to be different from the other one. Um, and with that being said, everyone's financial aid look package looks different as well. So one of my experiences, and one thing I really wish I would have known is um, everyone talks about all these scholarships that are available for you. But whenever you get there, where are they? So it's really important to really communicate with financial aid, see what you can um, basically apply for and obtain, and also know, and this is a part where I wish I knew, every school has a different financial aid package. So just because you got $5,000 at one school does not mean that you're gonna get $5,000 at another school. So one of the things, and I one of like, I express to all my students is, apply to as many institutions that you want apply to your dream school apply a plan uh, apply to your school that maybe it's your second choice and your third choice because you never know which one might be most convenient for you but also it's going to be a better fit for you I, I, oh sorry i thought it was like my time's up <laughs> um but it's hard coming in <laughs> but yeah that is some advice that um i want to like kind of contribute in terms of financials yeah, definitely. Good point, Genesis. Uh, when, whenever you apply for financial aid, um, everyone's different, like just like she said. And then when you apply to different colleges, uh, I work for a private school, so our cost of attendance is going to be pretty high. And so when people look at it, and they're like, oh, we might not get enough aid, but we do give out generous merit scholarships. So I tell students, just because it might look a little costly, just see what kind of scholarships. And then that net price calculator is a great tool to where you can kind of see what kind of, you know, you put your family financial information, just a rough draft. And then it can kind of tell you, okay, based off of your academics and your family's income, this is what you can expect. And that can kind of, kind of say, kind of give you an idea, okay, I can make this work. Ricky, you are speaking my language. Yes, the net price calculator. I feel very, very confident in saying that most universities have that title it's called net price calculator and most universities do have that resource for you so exploring the universities that you're interested in now regardless if you're a junior or a sophomore even a senior you know a lot of people think oh it's a little late in the season to be figuring out where i want to go yes and no um, because you have so many opportunities and so many colleges and universities would be thrilled to have you as a student. We get so excited about how excited you are. So connecting with your recruiter to talk about what financial aid or scholarships can be offered to you. Um, and I think Genesis and Ricky can both agree with me that once you have that conversation with that recruiter, it's just easier to have that additional support because like we said, as a first generation student, you might not know who to turn to. Right. Yeah, so true. And that kind of leads me into, um, you know, reaching out and getting involved on campus. So um, we only have seven minutes left, so kind of want to touch on that. But getting involved, I myself, I, I was very not like timid, but like, you know, you just meet all new people. Everything is so brand new to you. But one of the things that I have to say that highlighted my education was the experiences that I obtained as I was being, as I was getting involved on campus. I was part of multiple organizations. I was, you know, I even held leadership positions um, in these organizations that led me into like developing into the like person that I am now. I am now have different values that I had whenever I was 18. So it's just a big, it really does make a huge impact, these experiences that you have in college that shape you into this person, into this professional person that you're going to become after college. 
Yes, definitely take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, you know, internships, study abroad. Some I, I wish I would have studied abroad. Now that I talk to students, the, the things that they can do now, and you think, oh my gosh, going overseas, that's probably going to cost some money. But most students don't know that our study abroad office offers scholarships. And actually, you could use your FAFSA, you could readjust it to help pay for some of these study abroads. Because remember, how much it costs to go to class and then how much your family can, can afford. And if there's a big difference, you might get more money from FAFSA. So, and again, there's scholarships. And then some of these study abroads are, we have are like maybe a semester long or year long, but some of them could be like two weeks during your winter break or summer break. So how cool is it to go to like China or Japan or Asia or Europe or South America for two weeks, kind of get a class in and then, you know, enrich yourself with different culture. Right. So tell students get involved. Internships, definitely. Um, now a lot of schools, some of them re actually require them. That's giving you that job experience. And then, you know, usually if you do well in that, they'll usually offer you your first job when you graduate college. So internships is very important. Um, and then, you know, get involved. I was involved in like um, um, on our diversity uh, uh, office where they had trio and that kind of I guess led me to do what I do now. So I help first gen students or students from um, uh, different backgrounds, minority students. So, um, I mean, you never know, maybe doing one of those internships and um, getting involved can, can lead to something bigger. Yes, your college experience is your home away from home for the next four years. Whether the university you're going to is down the street um, three hours away or out of state, you need to make sure you are getting involved because not only do we want you to thrive academically, we want you to thrive socially, mentally, and physically. So you can be doing really well on your in your classes because you're putting in the effort, right? You're using the tutoring services. You're going to the library. You, you're doing what you need to do. But if you are not making friends or putting yourself out there to the possibility of, hey, my name is Christina, I'm new, does anyone know like where the best restaurant is here? <laughs> um, I know I spoke with one of my colleagues and they're like their recommendation, they did go um, out of state and they're like, I met a local. I became best friends with a local that lived there. So then he was telling me, oh, this is where you should go. This is what you should do. Oh, come with me here. So again, just making sure you're making those important connections regardless of where you go. And to highlight what Ricky said about an internship. When I graduated, I did not have an internship. But students did not shy away or I mean students employers did not shy away from offering me jobs because I was the president of an organization I was a vice president of another organization so I had these leadership abilities so making sure not only are you a member of organizations but if you have that opportunity and passion to become a leader or someone that has a ranking within that organization Great. So yeah, guys, so this is kind of our experience and maybe a little pointers that we can give you. And um, I know that we're almost out of time, but if you want to type any questions or have any other questions that we can answer, please feel free to type them now. And yeah, if not, you're more than welcome to kind of check out what other session you would like to visit and hop on into the other break room. I have a question for the panel. What, as first generation students, what were you most scared of? What did you not know and what were you most scared of and maybe realized I shouldn't be that scared? Um, I was actually undeclared. So kind of like Ricky said, I, I had no like, I felt like I had no sense of direction. I just went to school to be in school, but I didn't know like what I wanted to do or I had an idea that I wanted to be an occupational therapist but I didn't know what it, it took to be a, uh, or become an occupational therapist. Um, so I think like that was my biggest fear was kind of failure because I didn't have a sense of direction of what I, how I was going to obtain, like, you know, graduate really. <laughs> 
Right. And so I started out actually as a community college. So if, if you're thinking about transferring, you know, that's another option for students. Definitely save money on those classes that, you know, those basic classes. Uh, that's another option. So that's what I did. I was afraid I was because that kind of like I kind of had different majors in mind and computer science. I thought maybe for a little while engineering, uh, but I finally settled on business because I just didn't see myself that I saw the science and how much it took. And then uh, computer science was mostly coding and computer languages didn't like that so um but yeah uh it's basically working with your advisors and then you know they're there to help you out and then they kind of we had a two plus two program with a local university uh so you take the two years you it's guaranteed that those classes will transfer and it was so so simple so yeah it's just just meeting the right people and making sure you ask the right questions right yeah unlike genesis i knew what i wanted to study um, my bachelor's is in criminal justice. So just to give you an idea, I work in higher education and I've been working in higher education for over five years. So don't think that you getting a degree in a certain major is limiting you to that major. A degree is going to open so many opportunities for you and your family. And it's just that piece of paper that's going to just highlight all your accomplishments. So we're super excited as first generation students that you are thinking about college, know your resources when you are looking at your universities, get in contact with your recruiter, make that person your best friend. I mean, you don't have to share photos with them, but make sure you are staying connected with them. I think that leaves us with enough time to bid you farewell. Um, open that PDF, find your next perfect session. There are so many great individuals that are going to be in there. And thank you so much.